You're looking good, and oh. hey, the audience, welcome very, very much to Conversations. <clears throat> it's a great pleasure to welcome to the program. Personal friend of mine, and a man of great social uh, concern and political concern for the state of the world, and he's got a very interesting uh, story to tell about his own life. His name is uh, Robert Gums, and he's the founder and, I guess, the president or chairman of the Concern Forum. That's correct. And he's our guest, and welcome, Robert. So good to see you. It's good to be here. Good, good to be here. Good to see you again the other night. I'm glad your foot cleared up. You know, yeah. You a problem a while back. But anyway, welcome yeah. very much. Thank you. Let's start with you a little bit, Bob, where you were born and raised a little bit, just to wade in. And I know you've had experience within the military, including an agency that we're going to talk some about, the yeah. Defense Intelligence Agency. All right. Uh, but share your own back. Born and raised a little bit, and then we'll get into a talk about the okay. current situation. Well, um, I was born and raised actually not too far from here. I was born right here in Manhattan um, in West Harlem, St. Luke's Hospital, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. And I went from there. Uh, they brought me home to 112th Street okay. over on St. Nicholas. Okay. And we stayed there for about four, I say three or four, about four years. When you were an infant, you mean? Yeah, um, and then we moved into the grant projects. What's that? I don't know that. That's the New York City Housing Project. Okay, uh -huh. Over on the west side, West Harlem, mm -hmm. on the 123rd Street. Okay. Between Amsterdam and Broadway. All right. Yeah. And I basically did my growing up mm -hmm. there. there in the grants. Uh -huh. I was slightly fortunate in the sense that I went to, uh, I be began my education in public school, mm -hmm. but for the most part, I'm Catholic school educated. Okay. I went to a school, St. Thomas the Apostle, okay. over on West 118th Street, okay. which unfortunately now is closed. Uh -huh. I believe the Archdiocese had some problems as far as uh, funds to keep it open. Yeah, yeah. And then the family was Catholic, right? Uh, no, actually, no. no. Uh, my dad, he was high church, but he wasn't Catholic. He was, uh, he was from the Caribbean, from the Virgin Islands. Okay, yeah. And he was an Anglican. He, he, he was a high uh, Anglican, yeah? Yeah. St. Thomas? Or? St. Thomas, yes. St. Th I've been to St. Thomas. Yeah. Beautiful. Yes, it is. Wonderful, under the water to go scuba. Yeah. 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 And uh, his, his dad, his gran my grandfather, mm -hmm. was from the Dominican Republic. Okay, good. Yeah. So both my grandfather mm -hmm. and my father mm -hmm. were Spanish speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, my mom was a gentle, genteel mm -hmm. uh, black lady mm -hmm. um, with a heavy dose mm -hmm. of Cherokee Native American okay, yeah. from Virginia. Okay, okay. And mm -hmm. me myself, I grew up, as I said, right here in. Mm -hmm. Good old New York City. Yeah. What was the family setting like? Were you talking about politics and things? Yeah. My dad uh, was a, he was kind of a bigwig. Big wig. Yeah. Uh -huh. In the Republican Party in Harlem. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. But you have to remember. Back when the Republican Party was a different kettle of fish. Exactly. Yes. I exactly. Yeah, different. Far different yeah. than what it is now. Uh -huh. um, I believe, I know he ran for the assembly. Mm-hmm. That was either 52 or 54, okay. uh -huh. and um, I think he was district leader or the next level below district leader, uh -huh. and uh, he was a Republican. Uh -huh. um, I wanted to say lifelong Republican, my mom and, he, and him, but towards the, I would say, going into the 70s, uh -huh. the mid-70s, um, after they moved from New York and went down to Virginia, mm -hmm. um, I, I believe he was getting more and more disenchanted. Well, as many of us were with yeah. the Republican Party, yeah. the drift they was taking, yeah. Yeah, so, that, that disturbed him he, greatly. He had some big figures in the old Republican Party. Yeah, well, he was, um, you know, he I was... I mean, it had some elemental justice about it. Yeah. Or, or rationality. Yeah, he was a personal friend of people like... William F. Buckley, okay, um, uh -huh. Jack Kemp, oh, oh Kemp, Andrew yeah, Carroll. yeah, okay, yeah. those you know those sort of people, uh -huh. and I think what my mother and him, um, especially after they had the chance to experience the Republican Party 
and the direction it was going mm -hmm. in another part of the country there in the South. Because at that time, Virginia was still classified as a southern state. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you know. sure. That was, if, if there, yeah, yeah, I'm trying to get the time fixed there. So, mm -hmm. the civil rights thing had been going, Martin King and all of that. That's correct. And everything, so that's coming into the 60s and that, and they were active in politics. Did yeah. they, you say they went back to Virginia? So were you in Virginia with them or no? I was down with them for about a year a to year experience it, month? yeah. In, in Virginia Beach or? or uh, Richmond. In Richmond. In Richmond, in Richmond okay. yeah. Uh -huh. okay. And another thing I want to say about my dad also, he was a great union man. Okay. He was a shop steward uh -huh. and his union, Local 452. What was that? What is that? Uh, confectionate workers, candy workers. Okay, okay. Yeah, uh -huh. he was into that. Um, Solidarity and, forever. Yes. Yeah. Um, he was a great supporter of both Adam Clayton Powell okay. and Malcolm X. Okay. As okay. a matter of fact, he he was one of the first people that knew on the grapevine, as they say. Yeah. Um, well, he told my mom not to take me up to see Malcolm the day he got assassinated. Really? At the office? Yeah, so that's how close I he mean, was. Actually, your dad was thinking of going to that? Or you no, he, he, well, he found out through grapevine. the grapevine yeah. that it would be a good idea not to attend. Was that from somebody in the nation or something, or where did he? He wouldn't. That? He wouldn't tell me. Say, yeah. yeah, he wouldn't tell me. Yeah, horrible. Right? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it yeah. was. That was a tragic, tragic day in Harlem. Absolutely. Yeah. Tragic day, as far as I'm concerned, it was a tragic day for working people mm -hmm. around the world. Malcolm was not. very, very much uh, distrusted by much of the American white society and so forth, but he was a giant intellectually. He was a. He was yeah. what my daddy would have called a class act. Really yeah. smart. Really yeah. smart. Yeah. He was. And he really was. Yeah. 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 Uh, myself, um, I came back to New York, and what happened is I wound up going in the Navy. You did? Yeah. That yeah. would be as a young man, 18, 19 or something? No, actually, the first time I went in the military um, was when I was 17. Only? Uh -huh. Yeah, and at that point, that was during Nam, Vietnam, uh -huh. and I went in the Army. And you enlisted? Yeah, I enlisted. You enlisted? Yeah. Right? Was that a choice to, to make? The, okay. I what year was that? What year? 1971. 71? That was a tricky time. There was yeah. a lot of opposition to what was going on over there. What was, can you remember what your thinking about it was at that time? when you enlisted in the army? I was against the war, yeah. but I was for going in the military. Okay, you were for going in the military, why? Is there a problem or something? Well, because at, at that time, that's what uh, young black and Latino men usually did. It was something you could do. Yeah. Could, could you raise your mic just a bit, please? Oh, I, oh. Oh, we have to get it on. Okay, okay. we'll put it on. Yeah, just, no, we heard everything you said. Okay. We heard everything he said. Okay, okay. Thank you. Okay, that's okay. good. Thank you. Continue. Sorry, Thank sorry. You. Square, right? So, so that that would have been maybe. Uh, sorry, we had a problem with the mic had fallen on. But right. you, you, I'm trying to understand. It was an opportunity, for materialistically or something. For yeah, also materialistically. Yeah. Uh -huh. And also. A chance to see something of the world. Right, that's always something you yeah. want to do. Yeah. Yeah, and unfortunately, um, well, let's just say that I came out of that experience. I got a honorable discharge. Good, good. That's I got a good honorable beginning, discharge yeah. because <coughs> I was able to begin college mm -hmm. um, when I got home. Mm -hmm. But it was not a good experience. There were a lot of race riots. Um, that was in the military in general. Really? Uh, yeah. There was racism rampant still in the army. Uh, yeah, it had it had died down somewhat. Yeah, Truman. But Truman had in the late sixties. And the early 70s. Oh, that was such a hot period of time. Yeah, yeah. and that's what happened. Uh -huh. And I came back home, mm -hmm. and I started going to college, and then from there. Um, we had the crises here in New York City. 74? 76. 76. Well, 75, 76. Crisis, yeah. yeah. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. And what happened, um, my mom talked my dad 
and to moving down to Virginia with her. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And um, she was also, at that time, she was starting to go deaf in her uh -huh. hearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I guess, you know, when people have a crisis, um, which I experienced myself when my wife passed away, yeah. you want to um, yeah. go home as yeah, it is. Yeah, right, right. That's and it. that's what she did. Yeah. And I went down there mm -hmm. for, you know, I hung out for a while. Yeah. And then, as I said, I came back up here mm -hmm. and... I enlisted in the Navy. Okay, you you had been in college for a year or something, or what? Oh, about a year and a half. Yeah, something and, like that. Yeah, and that was liberal arts or something. Well, actually, it was pre-law. Pre pre-law. You were going to wanted to go into law, right? Yeah. You wanted to go into politics, maybe, or think yeah. about politics. I, right? Yeah, I was. Like your dad had been in politics. Yeah, at that yeah. time I didn't want to admit it, but yes. yeah. Yeah, was there GI Bill then or not? Yeah, and I will tell you right now, it is. It was much more GI friendly, mm -hmm. much more friendly to the servicemen mm -hmm. than what these guys have now. It's terrible. They're homeless. Yeah. I mean, they go over and fight, and then they're homeless, and they take all that grief and everything. Right. It's, uh... Well, you see, one of the things, and I know a lot of my, my, um, my left-wing friends, mm -hmm. and I consider myself extremely um, progressive, Yeah. but I think that one of the mistakes that we made yeah. was when we allowed Nixon to stop the draft. Oh. And I tell well, you why. I tell Charlie you what, Rangel talks about that. Yeah, yeah. I tell you why. Because that's not to say that we need the military mm -hmm. to go and take aggression yeah. around the world. Yeah. As a matter of fact, to tell you the truth, mm -hmm. the reason why it's so easy mm -hmm. for imperialist mm -hmm. uh, corporate uh, the corporate military industrial complex mm -hmm. to do the things around the world that they're doing mm -hmm. is because we don't have a draft. Because right now we depend primarily upon 1% of the population <coughs> that's actively involved with mm -hmm. the military. Right. Uh -huh. And <coughs> because of that, yeah, you can take a bunch of people and put them here mm -hmm. and put them there. Mm -hmm. Um, we got about 250,000, I think, now. Yeah, you know, well... And they're everywhere in the world. Yeah. yeah, and unfortunately, you even have Democrats. Mm -hmm. You had someone in the, in the Clinton administration. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was the first female Secretary of State uh, made the comment to Colin Powell. Well, we have this wonderful volunteer military. Let's use them. Mm -hmm. See, that's yeah. the mindset. Yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh, you see? Uh -huh. The idea of a draft is that the same reason why we have Social Security yeah, and Medicaid. Yeah, everybody's involved. Yeah. Because we're a family. A country is a family. Yeah. All right? Yeah. A military is supposed to protect that family. Yeah. It's not to be a tool of aggression. Not a tool of aggression. Or a mercenary force, oh. almost, in terms of the rest of the society. Could be well, seen as such. Or well, hirelings. Have, well, yeah. That's another danger. Yeah. Okay? Uh -huh. Because now uh -huh. you have private mercenaries. Well, you do now. You okay. have Blackwater in that. I think we have more uh, civilian personnel up in Afghanistan and whatnot than we yeah. have actual military that's people in support of this. Well, that's true. And it's a way to get away from the limitations. So it's yeah. more the double with the, uh, with, the, with the Blackwater and that kind of mer mercenaries in a certain yeah. sense, and it's a very dangerous thing. Right, and there's no chain of accountability, mm -hmm. and that's the problem that we have now yeah. with this setup. Yeah. So... I'm. Um, I, I don't know what to say as far as the future is concerned. Oh boy! About the volunteer military, I don't believe it's a good idea. I don't believe in a democracy that it's a good idea. Right. Now, of course, no one who is morally opposed mm -hmm. to taking human life uh -huh. should be forced to the military. Uh -huh. But by the same token, mm -hmm. I believe that everybody should put, has the, has a responsibility to play their role in this society, uh -huh. you know, helping in hospitals, helping in schools. Yeah. See, that's... that's Ser yeah. Service Corps or Peace Corps notions or something like that? Yeah, maybe. the Service Corps. Yeah, I'm yeah. not all that crazy about the Peace Corps. Yeah, okay. Uh, because I remember the time when the Peace Corps was basically used as a way for upper-income people to escape the draft. 
That was one of the dodges that was used. That's I'm not saying that it didn't do any good, uh -huh, uh -huh. but I'm just telling you the, the facts. Yeah, yeah. It was a different time. The 60s was different. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mm -hmm. think that there was more of an awareness mm -hmm. in people's minds mm -hmm. of what was going on. Now, people are just, they are just starting to wake up. Uh, you think so? Well, that's hope. Yeah. I keep my fingers crossed. Yeah, right, right, right. I keep both my fingers crossed. They're waking up to? Well, they're waking up to the fact that for the last 30 some odd years, mm -hmm. you basically had a conspiracy between a very large part of corporate America, corporate. Um, mm -hmm. right wing politics, mm -hmm. um, also Since evangelicals. Reagan? Since Reagan? Um, well, actually. Actually, with Jimmy Carter, believe it or not. Carter, okay. Yeah, it came. See, I, when I went in the Navy, mm -hmm. I went in in Jimmy Carter's Navy. Okay. So I was there through the whole thing. Uh huh. When I went in, the president was Jimmy Carter. Yeah. And when I came out, it was the president was George Bush Sr. Okay. So yeah. I saw the whole transformation. Right. Yeah, you were okay? eleven years, I think. Yeah. As an enlisted man. Yeah, enlisted. Yes. And you you attained the rank of uh, what sergeant? Comparable? It's like an E five. You were E five. E five. Yeah. E five. Yeah. And you were enlisted man. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you have very interesting experiences in the Navy that we want to talk about. Yes. Yes. Um, you were you were you were on the Nimitz, were you not? That was yeah. That was my first assignment. Uh huh. After Mississippi. What was your MSO? Well, I was a yeoman. Or a yeoman. Yeah, that's essentially one that handles anything administrative. I guess it's MOS, isn't it? Well, Military the, Occupational Specialty. Yeah, yeah, in the Army it's MOS. Mm. Um, in the Navy it's called rating. Oh, okay. Or what you do. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. And the you yeoman. You have to compare the Army to the Navy. You had done time in the Army. Yeah, I would say the Navy. It's better than the Army. I would think. But that's yeah. my personal preference. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. You know, only mm -hmm. because um, you have, I, I think you have more of an experience uh -huh. um, in terms of being overseas. Yeah, yeah. Um, join the Navy and see the world. Yeah, both will cost you your life. Yeah. Depending upon what happens. I lost some very good friends. You did. In, in, the Navy. in action. In yeah. action, in, yes. In the Navy. Right? In the Navy. You did sail, uh, you did, you were yeoman duty on the uh, Nimitz. That's At correct. the time of the Gulf of Sidra, no? Yes, I was and there. And also at the time when they were, it's, it's, it's a carrier, atomic yes. carrier, that's a big ship. Yes. That's like a city. Yes, it a is. big city, not a little town. Yeah. Uh, that and you, uh, you were also there, Gulf of Sidra, and also at the bombing of uh, Benghazi. In I was at the Pentagon. I was at the Pentagon. You were at the Pentagon then, not yeah. on the limits. No. Okay, you were at the Pentagon by then. You're right. But you'd been there, and then you got involved, and, and maybe we can get to it and everything, and then we want to get to the current political situation. And okay. Everything. But you were in the Navy, and you became. Uh, um, in the uh, what is called the Defense Intelligence Agency. Right. I and, uh, <clears throat> I was assigned to the Defense Intelligence Agency mm -hmm. um, in 1982. Mm -hmm. I was at the process. I was going through the process. I decided to reenlist, and I said, "Well, I'll take DC if DC is open. If we have anything in DC uh -huh. for my, you know, my rating." Yeah. Mm -hmm. And. Um, the answer came back, yes, um, the Defense Intelligence Agency. Wow. And I said, okay, where is that at? And yeah. they said, the Pentagon. Yeah, right. So it took me about a year. I was, when I left to come back to the States mm -hmm. uh, to begin my tour at DIA, we were off the coast of Lebanon. Oh, re oh, yeah. Yeah, we were playing. Yeah, we were playing backstop to the Marines. The, the ones, at the, so many of which were killed in that attack. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then Reagan backed out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was that was one of the few intelligent things that he did. <laughs> well, <laughs> they went in the, the opposite House. direction of what the, the drift was. Yeah. But maybe we could talk a little bit about that. You were there, and you were enlisted man, but you were there, and you told me in conversations of whether you were re regular visitor to the White House and that sort yeah. of thing with a courier for role and you came to know and were working within the defense intelligence agency yeah that was and my assignment understanding yeah. of it you must have had a security clearance for that I had because that's uh, well you know, I still have yeah it's, uh, it's not active yeah it's called a cosmic topsy um, cosmic uh, 
top secret SBI. Mm -hmm. And that means that I was cleared to see any type of information um, the president can see, uh -huh. I can see. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, SBI means that... SBI? Yeah. S, like... A, yeah, that goes for secret background. Okay, info. Well, secret background information. Yeah. Uh -huh. And basically what it means is that classified work is compart com com mm, compartmentalized. Yeah, I suppose it would be, yeah. So somebody can have the same clearance that you have, uh -huh. but... If they're not assigned to the job that you're doing, mm -hmm. they're shut out of the loop. Yeah, right. And there's you a know. lot of shutting out of loops within that tunnel vision. It's almost honeycomb oh, yeah. tunnel vision and everything yeah. like that. And uh, it's, a, it's an agency. I wonder how many people viewing are familiar with it even. And I wonder, maybe we could now just do it. We want to get to the politics of the current moment and everything. Okay. But uh, I've got a book I did. We, we, you were at a gathering at our house the other day. We're becoming mm. good friends and everything. And I'll show it. I'll hold it up. Maybe you can come in on this, Josh. I'm not sure which one you would. This is an outdated book, this one. This is one that's called Trail. Can you read it? Trail of the Octopus. You read it. Can you read the sub thing? Can you read it from where you are? Yeoman... Um, Trail of the Octopus yep. from Beirut to Lockerbie inside the DIA. Inside the DIA. Yes. This is a book that was written back uh, by uh, Donald Goddard. Uh, he's passed now, and Lester Cole Coleman, published by Bloomsbury. And this is a book that was written, and it's got, uh, J it's got the, uh, the tag for Lockerbie, yeah. you know, Pan Am 103, that there was so much... Uh, um, activity around in terms of uh, Libya, having done that. And uh, the, the theme of the book is that it was not Libya who did it. And there's a great number of people who originally thought that, that it was coming out of the Becca, the, the bomb that was placed up in Frankfurt and so forth. Yeah. And that was the original uh, view. And then there got to be a situation where there was uh, the need for strategic, it could have involved Syria and uh, people from the Becca and that it wasn't convenient geopolitically, and it was switched to Megrahe and to uh, Gaddafi and to Libya, and that they were not responsible for Lockerbie, even though they came, as everybody knows, to accept responsibility, but never guilt for it. They never mm. claimed they were guilt. So that's an issue that's current because we're bombing uh, Libya now mm. on a regular basis and all of that. But it's inside the... Um, inside the DIA, where you were, okay? Yeah. And there's a thing here, I'll just read a little thing here about it, and maybe it would be good for citizens to become aware, because we hear a great deal of talk about the CIA. Mm -hmm. I just got a thing from Russ Baker about the CIA involvement in Benghazi, which is very deep and very, uh, very long-standing. But this is a little thing that he's talking about a guy named McCloskey in terms of the narrative. I'll read it, one paragraph, okay? And then you can put me straight. Okay. But it says McCloskey was unperturbed by the delay. Uh, and they were talking about the DIA. And it says, um, uh, this wasn't the CIA, he said. The CIA was a showboat civilian agency. You got all kinds of oversight and congressional... And then, these were the professionals, the military, the combined intelligent arms of the United States Army, the United States Navy, and the United States Air Force. Together, they formed the largest and most discreet intelligence agency in the world. It's not the CIA, it's the DIA that one wants to pay attention to, perhaps, um, in, in the world. 57,000 people operating out of Arlington Hall, Virginia. Do you know where that is? Yes. Okay, or Arlington Hall, Virginia, and Bowling Air Force Base, Washington, D.C. Yeah. On a budget five times larger than the CIA's. They have a, a budget five times larger than the CIA. And this book goes back to the 80s, so it's probably grown. Mm -hmm. And a great deal of what Mr. Eisenhower warned against the industrial, uh, military industrial complex, Arlington and all of that, uh, Crystal City, is uh, got an awful lot to do with the way this country's going now. But anyway, it's there. <clears throat> 
No, uh, five times bigger than the CIA's. No restrictions, no oversight, and nobody ever heard of it. Why? Because it didn't make mistakes, and because the director reported to the Joint Chiefs of Staff, who didn't tell anybody anything they didn't have to know, the need-to-know basis. And that included the Secretary of Defense. The DIA is five times larger than the CIA, and I wonder if maybe, does that ring true to you? You're familiar with it? Is yeah. it important? They, they go in great detail about it here. Mm -mm. Uh, but I'm wondering, you as somebody who's actually served there and had clearance in that, does that ring true to you? Or could you d illuminate the existence of this DIA, five times larger, but in the intelligence business of, uh, of informing our governmental process? Well, the thing is... Uh, <clears throat> The DIA manages as best it can to stay out of the, the glare of the media. Mm -hmm. um, but it's known, mm -hmm. you know, it's even mentioned from time to time mm -hmm. on the media. Mm -hmm. uh, the CIA uh, has basically had a lot more romanticism attached to it, uh -huh. you know, uh -huh. um, a, hint of, a whiff of James Bond, okay, as uh, it were. Well, one of the things that are associated in the minds of many with the CIA are things like covert operations, okay. and things that are secret, and things that are done, uh, Contras, and things like that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, yeah, I know that we just killed, there were people that killed uh, Osama bin Laden up in Pakistan, they were SEALs. They were highly trained Navy people. That's correct. I presume that wasn't the CIA. That would have been elements of the DIA doing that kind of thing. What I'm getting at, are there covert operations? Are there things that are not known, not, no way for congressional oversight or any of the kind of things that might affect the CIA? Well, I'll, Where does put, it stand? Let me put it to you like this. Um, unfortunately, with many of our representatives, mm -hmm. um, many of them, Put on the put on the role that they don't want to know, to be quite frank. You, about you're talking it. about the congressional people. Yeah, in Congress, people in Congress, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. um, as far as covert ops, mm -hmm. uh, that's done by the United States government in general. Okay, well, but okay, seals are part of the United States Navy. Well, they are. They're, they're Navy. They're sailors, and they're doing covert things. Yeah. And the CIA does covert things. That's correct. And the CIA is doing covert things in Libya. Now, is the DIA? Does I, the DIA, they have a budget five times greater. I'm sure that... And I realize you weren't in an officer's position. You were, you were an enlisted man there. Yeah. Well, that really doesn't have anything to do with it. But you do have a feel for it. Yeah, I do. Okay. But, um, and is it important for the citizenry to be informed? More should there be let, more transparency about what the DIA? Let is me up say to, this first. If you understand what I'm getting at, you have 17 year old, 18 year old kids. Mm -hmm. All right, that that know a tremendous amount of what our government is doing around the world. You mean in the DIA? Yes, in the DIA. At 17, they're there as agents or something, or trainees or what? They're military people. The military, in yeah. the military, one of the military and, services. And they're assigned the DIA, mm -hmm. okay? Um, just like um, Specialist Manning, all right? We come across a, a, a vast amount well, of we, intelligence. Okay, let me say something, if I could, if I may. 17's young, I mean, but anyway, but in the, in the Army you have, uh, you know, you have Rangers, and then you have Special Forces, you have Delta, you have these other kinds of snipers, you have special ratings yeah, and that's, so forth. Yeah, that's not, Does, that has nothing to do with it. Those are just... That's Those are just um, jobs, Does the, occupational. Well, on, if jobs. I may, I'm a civilian. I don't know, but uh, when I think of a SEAL, I don't know. They're they're better than Delta Force in terms of oh, the, possible covert ops. It's training, okay? Yeah, but it's it's special training. Yeah, it's, and it's it's very elite. Uh, well, no, well, it is. You're trained to be like that. Yeah. Uh, all the say all the SEAL is, uh, he might be a machinist mate, a second class machinist mate. 
and he decides he wants to be a Navy SEAL. Yeah, well, it's tough training. So that he applies to that school, mm -hmm. and if he passes the background clearance, mm -hmm. then he's accepted, mm -hmm. and he's trained. And if he can pass the rigorous demands. Yeah. Both intellectual and physical. Yeah. And they're, now, they're geared for, they're geared for, among other things, like it was SEALs that went to Pakistan. Yeah, I know. Right? I've, oh, yeah. yeah, I've been with SEALs before. Yeah. Now, the main thing that we all need to be concerned about mm -hmm. is when you talk about covert actions, yeah. what you're essentially asking about is how much should we <clears throat> as American citizens be informed? Where is the transparency? Yeah, and how much are things being set up by covert forces from the CIA if that if you mention CIA among a lot of people, they think okay, there's a lot of hanky panky going on. I think on that one of the by the government that shouldn't be known and hidden. And right. Hard. I think the problem is that people we dwell too much on the names, CIA, DIA. The question basically is this: What is our government doing? Right. In a particular situation, and they, and we don't. The American people do not have enough transparency. Okay, particularly it seems to me the DIA. Compare, if I may, I don't want to get drawn. The DIA. I bet I wear, warrant there's only a, a handful of people in the audience would know the term DIA. Five times larger budget, no okay. oversight, right. and everything. Ready made for covert, hanky panky, subverting of governments, subverting of things, and that sort of thing, in a, in a, a covert, uh, undercover way, and that sort of thing. And nobody heard of them, but everybody's heard of the CIA. Is the only point I'm trying to make. And you had some association yeah. with the DIA. I had some association with the CIA as well. Okay, okay. And basically, what I'm you saying, can set it straight. Then there should be more transparency of this DIA. There should be more transparency mm -hmm. of the whole process. Of all of these, of the, of the, of whole, the whole intelligence thing. process. Those are like shock troopers. They're like shock troops. No, I wouldn't say shock no, troopers. No, okay. okay. All right. The president wants something done. Right. You know, he calls upon certain types of specialists to do it. Okay, well, we, we ought have, to be aware of those people. The, well, that's what I'm saying. Well, we the have existence. To, we have to be concerned with what it is that the president wants done. Okay, is none of that kind of thing that you see in Tom Clancy movies or any of that kind of, you know, the Bourne or whatever, mm -hmm. that doesn't apply to the DIA at all? There's none of that kind of stuff going on, covert things, assassinations, uh, uh, you know, uh, propaganda things, blowing up things in order to get a story going that's yeah. going to go to do something. I the would... DIA has got clean hands, there's nothing going on over oh, there. Oh, of course. That we... No. no. That's, that, if that's... they're not shock troopers at the behest of the imperialist leaders who are trying to get certain things done, they're now trying to kill Muammar Gaddafi with predators. Mm. But if you're doing that, why wouldn't you? You got Osama bin Laden with SEALs. They were very well trained and with good intelligence. Do you understand what I'm saying? They're now going to murder, uh, they're going to assassinate heads of state as part of the advancement of okay, our imperialist... It, right, I'm the, trying to get at some the, sort no, of... The point, the, is, the point is that that's not the SEALs, that's not DIA, that's not CIA, okay? Oh, okay. They're being told what to do. Okay. Okay? Yeah. That is, you know, that's the issue. Now... What I'm saying is if our policy is to assassinate Gaddafi. Yeah, that, that's, that's against international yeah, law. Yeah, well, it's against uh, international law. Yeah, Number right. one, that's illegal. Yeah. Number two, um, the American people have a right to know why this guy is an enemy. Well, that's another issue for policy level things. What is it about it? Uh, you know, they, they've announced that. They, remember Mission Creep, it's called, right? Yeah. And they, they were going to protect some civilians with that kind of thing, and now they're going to where they're going to assassinate Gaddafi. They're aiming for him now. Yeah. Okay, with predators. Is it okay to do it with predators? But if you could get some seals, why can't you get a couple seals secretly well, to go so he in there and the, shoot the, the son Here goes the point. Here goes the point. That's what I'm trying to get at. Here goes the point. Mm -hmm. That in the first place, we need, to, we need to know why is this country, Libya, with Gaddafi as the head, why 
is this guy an enemy of the United States in the first place? Well, that's a question. Yeah, okay, yeah, sure, yeah. Right. And as you see now in Congress, that's the question that representatives on both sides of the aisle are taking are it. asking. Right, trying to ask, but yeah. it's very hard to work now, its way. Now, let's see, see, here goes another point. If we had a, if we had a regular draft in effect, this crap wouldn't be happening. Okay, talk to that. If spell that out. I think that's the position that our representative Wrangle has taken. Yeah, because you would not have, the American people would not have their sons, their daughters, their husbands and wives put in a situation where we have no idea why they are, why they are killing or being killed. And that is the case in Libya. Now, it's my understanding that we're doing this on the behest of the Europeans, number one, to keep NATO together, and number two, because the Europeans right now enjoy a monopoly over Africa. They're very scared about competition from the Chinese. Yes. So for some reason... Hopefully that is the case. Yeah, that it, may be emerging. They're going yeah. to join the BRICS, so, the, so, the Chinese, or, or yeah. go through. They got M, Middle East, and uh, North Africa, right, and Mina, Mina. Mina. Now... And they're going to do a lot of their work the uh, reason, China through right. that. Now, the reason that where they're so concerned about Gaddafi is because Gaddafi... I don't care what you think of the man, mm -hmm. but he has he has done a lot materially for the African continent, or as they like, you know, the media love they, they love to divide Africa, sub-Saharan Africa, yeah. as opposed to North Africa, yeah. and it's you know it's all Africa. Yeah, and they and the West has done nothing to benefit the people of Africa. They're only concerned with the people who are rich and powerful to a degree. I agree. They would like to have uh, Africoms based up in Europe because they can't get any country to agree to have military forces in Africa to occupy it and, uh, the way they're trying to occupy up in Iraq and yeah. all the. So the point is that NATO is doing this. Sarkozy seems to me ought to be put in the dock. It looks to me an awful just like lot. Uh, you know, good old-fashioned European colonialism of the African continent. It, that's Seize the, the resources and divide and conquer and uh, have us rule. And, and uh, they'll be dealing with the people of Africa and the Middle East as wogs like the British used to call them lesser people. Well, that's the impression it, that I get. Doesn't that make sense? Or doesn't that seem to be the order of the day? What's yeah. the other rationale? No, there, as far as I'm concerned, there really is no rationale. Oh, there isn't? Okay. When, see, when you talk... when when, when uh, the president or someone else talks about um, Qaddafi being, a, you know, that doesn't, you know, that doesn't phase me, because the United States has done so much business, a with dictators, absolutely, b yeah. Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia is, is the biggest big dictatorship out. Horrible, yeah. You Women know. can't drive cars for crying. I know, I've seen that. Yeah, you know. Yeah, you've been there, I guess. Yeah, been to Bahrain. Yeah. 15th, uh, yeah. Were you docked there? This fifteenth, uh, the fifth army or fifth navy? Fleet? Yeah. i Yeah. You've I've, been there, Bahrain. I've been all through that area. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the idea that you're going to select one dictator mm -hmm. over another dictator. Mm -hmm. You lose a lot of moral credibility. With all due respect, I think there's a big difference between the dictators of the Emirates or Qatar or Saudi Arabia and Qaddafi. Qaddafi was loved by Nelson Mandela. I know he that. He said he was more than anybody else. He helped break the back of par apartheid. I am Qaddafi sure that. has done things. He's setting up uh, an African banking system. Well, I'm going to tell you. He's you setting know, up things to benefit the people. Yeah. The Indian nations of the Western Hemisphere who have been bad horribly treated by European colonialism since Bizarro and Columbus mm -hmm. like him because the people who've been oppressed, a lot of the black community has been oppressed by white people in this country or around the world. He is in favor, he's got support from the people who have been oppressed. Well, see, here goes you can't have anybody like Robin Hood right has to be made an outlaw by King John who was a real son of a gun, if you know. Yeah, with Harold, a lot of special let me make this point, Harold, and it's this. To impress his uh, law upon the Let me people. make this point. I don't believe that the United States um, under President Obama 
I believe that this is something that the president is being pushed into. I believe he is the president. Well, yes, I mean, he and is I the understand. president. And we do want to get to electoral politics. We had an election coming up right. this year. But anyway, yeah, he, he, you, you think he's just, let's say, been duped? I think Has no. he been duped? Uh, has he been made, I would say duped. He's ignorant of what the reality well, I was, is? The president's not an ignorant man. No, but he could be ignorant of a situation, not, particularly if he's depending upon intelligence from the intelligence agency that gives him wrong intelligence because they don't have an understanding I of think, how can you support anybody who's in favor of the lesser people of the world. I mean, I you, you, you don't support people of the lesser people of the world. If you're Rome, you support the rich and powerful. I everywhere. think that the problem in the United States, um, for example, our Secretary of State, um, I think she made a very uh, demeaning speech. She was in Africa a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And she made a speech which to me was very condescending uh, I wouldn't, yeah, um, okay, yeah. to the African nations that were gathered there. Yeah, like a school teacher. Yeah, and I don't think that Hillary Clinton um, has any business. Uh, I don't think she's qualified to tell the African nations uh, what is in their own best interest. Mm -hmm. um, I think that was remarkably rude. Mm -hmm. um, well, we're being rude. Four billion dollars a year to Israel, right? Yeah. Blocking yeah. the flotilla, calling them, you know, that kind of. Thing. So do you understand? We're asserting ourselves like an empire. We got, we've got forces in all. I the know. World. I was there. <laughs> you've been on the yeah. scene, and you've been at the yeah. center of the DIA, and this is the intelligence you're getting. The intelligence gives uh, parameters of what the reality is. There is realpolitik, and they don't seem to be really informed about the way the world is moving. But see, here goes the problem, and the problem is this. The American people, unfortunately, um, I think a large amount of us uh, don't know. I think there's another large group of us that maybe they don't want to know. Right, right. And I feel that that is the problem that we're facing in this country. Okay, yeah. And I, you know, I fear... It's very dangerous to be that so these uninformed. Foreign, yeah. yeah, that these foreign policy ec uh, adventures, mm -hmm. they're doing nothing but costing us lives, money, and they're also costing us a lot of self-respect. Uh, if I may, the, yeah, Harold, if I may. Yeah, they're dropping predators down everybody's chimney all one over the One of the place. things like that's so terrible. In China shop. Yeah, one of the things that's so sad, if you look at the movies, mm -hmm. okay, and I love old movies. Me too. If you look at how the world mm -hmm. saw the United States. Yeah, I know. And how mm. we saw ourselves during... And immediately after the, after second, war. the yeah. second World War. It was war. wonderful. The growth of the middle class, it was really, really right. right. As uh, it's to, true. Right. As, uh, as compared to how we're viewed around the world, number one, and most importantly, how even we view ourselves. Yeah, that's getting very dangerous, yeah. Yeah, it's heartbreaking. Yeah, right. It is literally heartbreaking. Right, right. Because now, when you see a picture of... Um, you know, Jimmy Cagney being parachuted in the occupied France mm -hmm. to fight the Nazi occupiers. Oh, you're fighting the bad guys. Yeah, now we now, are the bad guys. That's what I was getting ready to say. That's what I'm saying. We are the, the bad guys. Occupiers. The occupiers. Yeah. We are the, uh, in, in Casablanca. Yeah. We're the people that are gunning people down. And we don't have a vision, apparently. And, know? well, it's, it's... Oh, we've lost the vision. Well, now, you know, the talk, you know, move it to electoral politics. Okay, let's get to that because we're coming up to election next year. Yeah. And Mr. Obama was voted with great. I certainly was very overwhelmingly pleased when a man with all that class and intelligence was voted in 2008. Yeah. A lot of people are upset with it. We got this debt ceiling that's coming up this month and yeah. so forth and all of this. The Republicans are the party of no. They voted no to everything. They would like to, uh, yeah. I think they would like to get, uh, large elements would like to get back to just get rid of everything under the New Deal, that everything happened after Roosevelt and everything. You're still on my thunder, Harry. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm just saying it's very dangerous because a lot yeah. of the support 
of the people yeah. that were in support of him, including the intellectuals and yeah. the young, the blacks, the Indians, the people that have been most uh, helped in the traditional Democratic uh, Party uh, have always done it. The Jew, even a large part of the Jewish population in that, they're yeah. now backing away because of the uh, inability. They, 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 the bankers, Greece now, the bankers are getting overwhelmingly wealthy. They got all that money. They gave them trillions of dollars. They got big yachts. They're not invested. There's no jobs. Keynes said we're coming up with a situation. Where it's structural. Structural. It's not uh, even a choice of whether you want to. Structural. He said to the grandchildren, Lord Keynes in 1930, mm -hmm. you're going to be confronted with structural, technologically induced unemployment. The only way we have to get any buying power to the people to clear them, we don't have the demand. The people don't have the money to buy what can be produced. We haven't over, you know, so we got a real problem with that. And then the, they, the banks got all the money. They're going to invest it overseas. Well, let me say where this. Where there's slave labor and mm -hmm. no standards. And so we're in a fix. And the, and the, and the, uh, the economic situation is not going to be recovered in the traditional way. So Mr. Obama may be in real trouble of being voided out and may be coming in from this sideline. Some know-nothing thing like a Tea Party seems to be actually gaining to where they could maybe take over this well, country. Well, here goes the problem. So we want to de How do we deal with Mr. Obama in, as an electoral candidate? Well, now what I'm, do we do about it? Is he going to continue well, to let me, just keep jumping off the end of the world? Is it never going to serve the purposes of the people? And where do we stand electorally for the election coming up well, next year? Well, here's, here's what it is. Mm -hmm. And at this point, um, this is where a lot of my um, progressive friends and associates um, might be very disappointed with me. Mm -hmm. But I believe that the truth is the truth. And sometimes you have to look at things for what it is. Okay. Um, I am a volunteer for Obama. For Obama, yeah, I can understand. The office, yeah. yeah, you know, I make phone calls for them. Um, I plan to do a lot more. Okay, through the course of the summer. Yeah, we only got about a from year from the to office go. Yeah, right over here. Over yeah, his uh, campaign headquarters here in Manhattan, over on Twenty First Street. Uh -huh. I'm extremely active uh, okay. with those good people, and you remain so. Yes, and I'm okay. also um, a member. I've, I've been a member for a while with the Coffee Party, coffee. which is yeah, they are they are an, an answer to the Tea Party. Oh, the I haven't heard of that. Yeah, no, tell me about it. Yeah. Well, what basically, what it is, we deal with issues. Uh -huh. We're not saying okay, w uh, that party does not support candidate A as opposed to candidate B. Right. But the issues, mm -hmm. for example. We believe that Social Security should not be touched, for example. I think the uh, right-wing Republicans would like to do away with it if they could. Well, see, that's, see this is the situation that we're in. Yeah. There is, on the side of, and I don't like to get into this thing left, right, on the side of sanity, there's no one else that is in a position to run. Except Obama. Except President Obama. Uh -huh. And the Democratic okay. Party. No, no point in thinking well, you got a tea party. You know, you're talking you about... you got a coffee party that would be supportive of his re-election? To, 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 uh -huh. to, to basically come to the terms, to use the mm -hmm. terms mm -hmm. that I don't like, mm -hmm. left and right. Yeah. Those of us on the left, mm -hmm. there is no, um, you know, the Green Party, Socialist Party. That's not going to happen. Okay, it never has, yeah. you know, especially what is it to the election? About thirteen, fourteen months, mm -hmm. yeah. somewhere around there. Well, it's November. Yeah, you are November. not going to bring about. More. You are not going to bring about a sudden flash of enlightenment mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to the American voters in say Missouri, West Virginia, yeah, right. or Idaho. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. That ain't going to happen. Mm -hmm. It would be nice mm -hmm. if we lived in that kind of a country, mm -hmm. but unfortunately right now we don't. What do you think is going to happen to unemployment in this country? What level are we going to see come November or leading up to it? Uh, is Mr. Keynes right that it's structural and there's going to be massive unemployment? So, and they're, they're sabotaging anything that could be done to support the, uh, you know, the... Uh, you know, the, the support for the people. Well, see, here goes the thing. And they know. vote no on everything. All right, hold on a second. Here goes the thing. 
I'm supporting Obama, and I tell you one, another reason I'm doing it yeah. is because I am not going to hold him responsible. You are not going to hold him no, no, responsible. Hold on a second. Okay. I'm not going to hold Spell him responsible yeah. for what's happening with this economy right now. Okay, he Because inherited. just as you said yourself. It happened before he came on board. Well, beside yeah. that, everything that this poor guy has tried to do. Okay. Okay. As if been. he says it's raining outside, we need to bring an umbrella. Yeah. Uh, Cantor, who I think yeah. is a spiteful, you know, he's a typical uh, rich, uh, petty, mm -hmm. uh, worst kind of Virginian. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've experienced people like him. Okay, like yeah. I said, my my mom is from Virginia. Yeah, I know yeah, those yeah. Yeah, that okay, type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, mm. he's going to argue against the fact that it's raining. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. If, a, if uh, the president was standing out in the middle of a thunderstorm, there was a party. Okay? I think in the no, in the nineteenth century, the know nothing. The know nothing. They celebrated ignorance. Yeah, well, that's yeah, what we're yeah, doing here. Yeah, yeah. That's what the campaign. Of Michelle Bachman and, and Sarah Palin okay. are all about. Okay, you know? Tea Party territory. Yeah, yeah, they they wish to the, they wish for the American people the glory mm -hmm. in their own interest. Mm -hmm. The Republicans have no one with any you know basic any basic sense or decency, mm -hmm. with the possible ex exception of John Houseman. Mm -hmm. And my question to him would be, mm -hmm. yeah, you are a very intelligent and brilliant guy. Why are you associated with that party? Uh -huh. So as yeah. far as Romney's concerned, yeah, uh, Romney has no business running for president. He's going to run on the, uh, if the if the numbers are seven, eight, nine unemployment, he's going to run it's uh, Obama's fault. Well, they, Romney... They've sabotaged everything and everything on the... It, it's back to Keynes and Hayek. Well, know, they, Romney has no business running until he decides who he is. Mm -hmm. okay. You know, first he was the moderate liberal governor of Massachusetts, mm -hmm. and now he's like uh, trying to make himself into a right-wing hero mm -hmm. and that's nonsense well they've got to have to cater to that the tea party contingent aren't they it seems to have grown like mushroom well and you you're worried about Bob yeah you, I am very you imagine worried her getting the nomination I heard Chris Matthews say that she was going to get the nomination as a very good possibility amazing it's a it's amazing More her than Palin yeah it's uh -huh. amazing to me that the veneer of education and civilization that we supposedly maintain as Americans, how easily this veneer is ripped away yeah. to show that there's a, there's a, a, a certain part mm -hmm. of this country mm -hmm. that are hateful, mm -hmm. bigoted, and spiteful. Ignorant? And, do you think ignorant or yeah? Well, remember now. No, no, hold on a second. They want him to lose. I mean, they want him to be discredited. They the want him to no be purpose. destroyed. Yeah. The, what, what, what I wish the president... In a vindictive would, way. That yeah. It was not Republican Party of your daddy. So. Yeah, no, it's no. not. What the, what, what the president oh. would do, I wish he would do, and maybe inside, behind closed doors, I'm quite sure, maybe he does realize this. And I understand that he has, he's trying to portray a certain persona because he is the president. Yeah, he's And right. because he's not trying to divide this nation. Mm -hmm. If anyone is trying to keep this nation whole and together, it's Barack Obama. I think maybe, yeah, you're right, yeah. Okay. He's, 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 yeah. He, but see, yeah. the problem is... You can't say, if they're going to only say no, you can't get them to he say He has to be so no. careful about everything he says because... Mm -hmm. If he says the truth of what's going on, that, yeah, they're trying to destroy me, and they don't care if they destroy the country. And it'll get too close to the fact that you're getting down to issues that are really at the core, like, say, uh, the, the thing where the country could melt down. The whole system could melt down, yeah. and so they would call him subversive in the name of their their well, view of things, and that's very dangerous. The, yeah, now... The legitimacy of the whole... Here goes the thing. This this business about not paying the... Um, debt limit. Debt limit. Yeah. Now, constitutionally... They don't want to, by any case, to back off from... Well, hold on a second the, now. The rich. No revenue enhancement. Now, Harold, That's why you don't have I, demand. Now, hold on a second. You, you have to realize that constitutionally... He has the power 
to say, I'm president, I'm authorizing the Treasury Department to meet that debt ceiling. Yeah, well, he can do it, but he has to. He, he would not be able to do that without some uh, dealing with the Congress. No, not necessarily. Okay, he not can do it by executive decree? Or by, ex yeah, by executive decree. Okay. Um, this is a question when you're talking about the full faith and credit yeah. of the United States. Yeah, well, it's 14 trillion now, it's getting up. You Congress know, does not have the right, they do not have the mandate to destroy this nation. Well, the thing is, is the nation or the world, in a sense, the thing, my larger word, the vi the leadership of the world. What's going on in Greece, in Europe? It could mm -hmm. Matt Tass decide. What's going on? They don't have a system where the capital is more responsible for production, causing dis uh, displacement of labor, means to get income to the people. They don't have a way of having ownership be de democratically held by the people of the world, so that money comes to them, so they got money to clear the market. They don't don't have a system that's required. Mm -hmm. Libya had such a system in place. Yeah. That may be one reason why they're being attacked. Yes. They directly distributed money to people and also ownership of stock within private sector entities. That's what we need. We don't need it, neither party. So the whole world is on the teeter of, uh, of, of a system just collapsing. And that's very, very worrying to everybody. And uh, so, uh, and they won't even think of having any uh, you know, uh, enhancement of, uh, of uh, you know, taxes. I mean, well, it, it is, one thing, Robert, so we should support, I think you're probably right, Mr. Obama should be supported. Yes. And uh, so we've run out of time, Robert. We could go on talking at great length. But it's listen, wonderful talking with it's you, It's good Harold. talking to you. Robert Gums, then, he's a very concerned citizen. He's, got, he's chairman of the Concerns uh, Project. Concerned Forum. Concerned Forum Project, or Concerned Forum. And yeah. he's very concerned with the issues. Happy to have brought that up. Thanks for filling us in on the DIA a bit from your own personal experience. Yeah. I think we ought to investigate it. And then we ought to be starting some level head to think about what are we going to do within the stalemate uh, of the political situation coming up to 2012. Yeah. We've all got to give some thought to that. And we have but, to. We're yeah. going to probably have to cut some slack here and there or something for, you know, uh, uh, extremist positions and that, and also... The, uh, Harold, before we, as we go, let yeah, me say one thing. Yeah, talk as much as you can before they cut us off. Right. Yeah. I understand how a lot of people might feel disappointed that the president do. wasn't I able yeah. to get certain things accomplished. But we have to support him for the second term. Mm -hmm. There's no viable third party yeah. right. when you're talking about going across the United yeah. States, going across yeah. America. Right. I don't want to wake up and see Michelle Bachman and Perry, the governor of Texas, yeah. Those two as yeah. president and vice president. Yeah. Why is and that's it, real. Why is it we always end up, as Mr. Uh, 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 Julie Kufferberger, the fuck said, how is it we always end up voting for the lesser of two evils? Are we ever going to get a thing where they're going to get it together? This is partly what we're talking about. It's a concern of us all. And uh, it's the, I don't think the he's going to have a hard time mustering the kind of support he had in 2008. Because of the uh, contradictions or the inability to get things done and also whatever the fortunes of the world.